Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to part five of my series on quadratics and inequalities. Today, we're gonna to look at how we use inequalities in solving fractions. So part A, find a set of values for which six over X is greater than two. Now there's a couple of things we need to consider here. Now we know if it was an equal to symbol, we would just times through by X, right? But with inequalities, we need to be careful because we know from even our year seven days and earlier that when we multiply through by a negative number, the inequality does flip. Now, if you multiply through by X, X can take a range of values, which could either be positive or negative. So when we multiply through, we do want to cancel out that x, but we have to make sure what we multiply through by is positive. So instead of multiplying through by x, we multiply through by a function of x, which we know is positive, and we'll cancel out the x, very simply, x squared. We just multiply by the same denominator, we square it to ensure positivity. So we times both sides by x squared, and the x's here would cancel. So we'd be left with 6x is greater than 2x squared. Then we move the 6x over. So we've got 2x squared minus 6x would be less than 0. Yeah? You can see the, the 2x squared is in the less than side. So I'm going to write like this. 2x squared minus 6x is less than 0. We can divide through by 2. We get x squared minus 3x is less than 0. Now solving this quadratic, we're going to factorize our x and we'd have x minus 3 less than 0. Then from our last episode, we're going to solve this. Here we can just write down that the roots would be x is 0 and x is 3. So our quadratic will look something like this. When is it less than 0? Well, the quadratic is below the x-axis here. For anything between 0 and 3. So for here we would say x can be anything between 0 and 3. Now part b, what value of x must be excluded from this solution set? Now we have to be very careful with these questions. If this was an equal to, so if the question said 6 over x is greater than or equal to 2, then there's one value which we would have included in our answer which we're not allowed and that's zero. Because it's six divided by x, we have to make sure that our solution does not include x. So for part b, all we're going to say is that x cannot equal zero, and that is the only value that we can't include in our solution set. All right, so let's try with these. So for the first one, two over x is greater than five. So we're gonna practice the same skill. Leave a bit of space in between. So we need to times both sides by x squared to cancel out the x in the denominator. So we get 2x is greater than 5x squared. Move the 2 over, well, the 2x over, we get 5x squared minus 2x is less than 0. Factorize, so we get 5x minus 2. What are our solutions here? We would have x is 0 and 2 fifths. And same as last example, we're doing less than 0, so x can be anything between 0 and 2 fifths. Keeping in mind that x is not allowed to be 0, and that's fine because it's a strict inequality here. Now for part b, how do we do part b? Slightly different. All we do is we register the, the denominator and say, look, we need to times both sides by that denominator, but we need to make sure it remains positive by squaring it. So the x plus 3 cancels with the squared, and we have 2 lots of x plus 3 is less than 4 lots of x plus 3 squared, which we're going to have to expand. I'm going to start doing that, so x plus 3 squared would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. You can actually divide both sides by 2 now, 
I'm just going to do it after. So we get 2x plus 6 is less than 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. Then we're going to move everything to this side, and that's on the greater than side. So we'd get 4x squared, 24x minus 2x is 22x, 36 minus 6 is 30, greater than 0. Now we're going to divide everything by 2. Now if you're not interested in trying to factorize, um, you can use your calculator. So getting our calculator out, let's make sure we can see everything. So menu, polynomials, we want 2, 11, and 15. So you got minus 5 over 2 and minus 3. So minus 5 over 2 and minus 3. So I'm going to write that here, x equals minus 5 over 2, x equals minus 3. What would the factorizing have been there? We would have had 2x plus 5 and x plus 3. So make sure you always show that. So then sketching our graph, we have our roots at minus 3 and minus 5 over 2. And we want to know when is it bigger than zero. So we have the end parts of the quadratic, the parts above zero, above the x-axis. So we can see those x values are less than minus three and bigger than minus five over two. To give you your solutions. Next question, just as extra practice, find the values that satisfy this. So we're going to times both sides by x minus 1 squared. The x minus 1 cancels here. Now we can do all this at the same time, so we're going to expand it. So 4x times x gives you 4x squared. 4x times minus 1 is minus 4x, then plus x minus 1. Now here, x minus 1, when we square that, will be x squared times by 3 is 3x squared. Then we have minus 2x times 3 is minus 6x, minus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times 3 plus 3. Move everything over to this side. 3x, well, 4x squared minus 3x squared is just x squared. Minus 6x, when we add it to the other side, would be plus 2x. four x squared minus three x squared is x squared. Now here we have minus four x plus x is minus three x. Then when we add the six x over would give us a plus three x. Then we're subtracting three from both sides would make minus four is bigger than zero. This is a nice factorize. So we're gonna get four and one. We're gonna have plus four minus one. So when we sketch that, we have 1 and minus 4. Now when is that bigger than 0? We have the ends here. We have x is less than minus 4 and x is bigger than 1. Now I just wanted to show you a different way you could have done this because you don't actually have to expand all the brackets if you don't want to. So remember our step of just expanding everything. When we times through by x minus 1 squared in this case, is we notice that both sides after cancellation has an x minus 1. So what you could do here is collect everything on one side. So I mean I moved everything to the uh, left side and you still want to do that because this is the bigger x squared, so it's 4x squared here, and then on the right side it's 3x squared. So you have 4x plus 1, x minus 1, minus 3, x minus 1 squared is bigger than 0. And you can actually factorize out x minus 1 from both terms. What would be left? You would have a 4x plus 1, 
minus 3. And because it's x minus 1 squared and you've taken out an x minus 1, all that would be left is x minus 1. And then we simplify this. We have 4x plus 1 minus 3x plus 3. So we have x minus 1. 4x minus 3x is just x. And then 1 plus 3 is plus 4. And you can see that gives you the exact same solution as before. You would have the x is 1 and x is minus 4. And after this sketch, you get the exact same answer. And it's up to you which method you want to use. But that's it, guys. Thank you for joining me for my algebraic fractions and inequalities. If you like the video, then please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Next episode, we're going to be looking at quadratics and modeling examples. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Peace.